Hey everybody, welcome to Hilltop Machine Works. Well, we got another project backing in the drive. This time it's an old Bronco. Apparently uh, it needs some work. So, uh, bring you guys along for another <coughs> uh, <coughs> Fixer upper here. I'm not sure how much work it uh, is required. I think there's some axle issues, at least in the rear, uh, broken bolt uh, in the head or the front of the block or something. So we'll get this thing unloaded and we'll uh, see what we got to work with. It was a tight squeeze, but he got it in there. So let's see if we can get it out. Mid 70s Bronco. Sounds good. Probably a 302. I think, unless the earlier, early years had 289, I'm not a Bronco aficionado. I've worked on a few, but don't know all the facts like I know on older Jeeps. Yeah, you're just kissing it. Three oh two, it says. Uh, let's see, uh, nine inch rear is that a forty four front? Yep, forty four front. <clears throat> so. Let me. Uh, All right, let me uh, show you what I'm going to start working on here. Hopefully you can see that. That's the alternator, uh, upper alternator bolt that uh, holds the alternator. And it's broken off right there, uh, just under flush. So I'm hoping to center drill it and left hand drill bit and get lucky and back it out. So the head is still warm, so hopefully that'll help us too. So. That's what I'm gonna try to do Well guys uh, taking a break from trying to drill that broken bolt out of the uh, Head there it's uh Not wanting to come out of the left hand drill bit I about got her drilled through with a uh, center drill and a regular drill But we'll probably just kind of drill the whole thing out and put on like a Healy coil or an easy out and fix it uh, So over to the axles if you notice how uh, greasy she is, <laughs> let me move you down there. Those are the brake parts, uh, slicker than an eel snot. So he's got, uh, God man, there you go, a uh, leaky wheel bearing, or should I say a leaky axle seal, and um, obviously it's been leaking for a while. And let me set you here and I'll pull this out and you can see uh, you notice kind of looks a little chocolatey so he's gotten some water in there at some point in time and the bearing doesn't feel the greatest so we're going to replace the bearings and uh, obviously a retainer ring comes with the kit and we move you in here if you look in there that's the seal it's gone bad so we'll pull that seal out we're gonna do both sides and um, go ahead and pull the pumpkin it's a, uh, a four nine incher so it comes out from the front and then we'll clean all that out so uh, it's probably like chocolate milk in there which isn't good for the gears and bearings but um, anyways that's what happens when you don't uh, take care of your stuff and water gets in there so uh get all this cleaned up got parts ordered so that's where we're at on this rear axle figure i'd show you what we got going on so uh thanks for watching guys just kind of a quick easy project well let's get on this uh axle seal the parts came in from randy's ring and pinion so i got the new uh bearings and the bearing retainer collar and they sent seals but I am guessing, hopefully the white is good, that I've got the wrong ones. The ID fits good on the uh, axle shaft, but if you look, I think it's going to be uh, 
wrong OD. So, just feeling how much lip and what we got. Oh, so let me move you guys to the side. I just got my slide hammer set up. So let's pull this thing, and this is probably going to pour out some gear oil. So let me get my pan here, get set up. Because if it's the wrong seal, today is Sunday. So uh, to call them on Monday and get the right ones ordered and get a return authorization for the ones they sent me. set up what you got is best way to do it is to screw this out and it will spread those two fingers uh, I guess I got some junk on that thread there you go a little better now seal wasn't so uh, recessed in there I'd use a different seal puller Monday. So I can't put in new seals today. We can get the old bearings off and get the uh, new ones pressed on. Doesn't look too bad in there. A little chocolatey. Clean this out before we put new seals in. Matter of fact, yuck. All right. Well, it is uh, time to get back on this Bronco repair. The bearings and retainer ring are in from Randy's Ring and Pinion, and originally they sent us the wrong seals but now I've got the correct seals these are seal bearings and let's see here <laughs> the correct seals came in I don't know can't remember if I showed you that the, the other seals the ID was right but the OD was incorrect so these are the right ones they actually even look like the, let me get the other one, look like the uh, original Ford ones. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's the original Ford getting the white just right logo. So these have been in there since 1973. I say, uh, what, 45 years, that's pretty good on the seal. So. We'll get these in once we uh, clean the nine inch out real good. Since it looks like chocolate soup in there, which is not a good thing for bearings, gears, or seals. So I am going to move you guys around right there. I'm going to go ahead and just buzz these off with a cutoff wheel on a four and a quarter inch grinder. You guys have seen me do this before. We did this on the uh, 
uh, Jeep CJ axle upgrade. So I'm not going to bore you with that. Plus, I like putting the uh, camera stuff up because of the sparks and all the grit and flying debris that this produces. Obviously, uh, another way you could do it, uh, you could heat them up with the torch and get these to expand a couple thou and then you know slide them off. That works too. Or if you want to pull them off, you can do that. But I think I'm just going to buzz them off because that works for me. So uh, I'll bring you guys back once I get these done and we'll go over to the press and we'll press these bearings on. Try to get you in uh, pretty close, even this GoPro is a little bit of wide angle. So there's your uh, basically journal that your bearing rides on and then the retainer goes right there. Just cut her off and she expands. And this has got the big ball bearings in that uh, polymer retainer. That's what holds them in. So. Easy breezy lemon squeezy. We'll get her uh, probably going to wire brush that, clean it up just a little bit, and then we'll get them over to the press and we'll get them pressed on. Got you over here at the press. That's about as close as I can get you right now. So, just uh, putting the bearing on like we did uh, on the other on the uh, Jeep build. See if I can. Uh, Let's say try to hold the plate up. There you go. So you guys can see her. We're just pressing her on. We're going to hit that shoulder right there. Boink. All right. Feels good. Easy breezy, right? And then next we'll put the... Uh, Bearing retainer ring on, and it actually be done. This is one of the better deals in Harbor Freight. If you don't have a 20 ton press, this is the way to go. There's no reason to spend more money because all this is is <laughs> steel and a bottle jack. So, you really can't go wrong with that, right? All right. Get this out. Slide back in. Make sure we're good here. And I just use this block just to take up some space. I may eventually invest in a new Bionic bottle jack. I want to just hit the switch and let the air do the work. As of right now, this is working just fine. And let me get my light here so I make sure I get shoulder to shoulder. Don't know if you can see that from your angle or not. About one more. One more there. Sweet. Well, I'm going to do the uh, other one off camera because it's just basically a rinse and repeat. And then uh, these shafts will be ready to put in. Well, Brad and myself and Jessica are here. We're trying to get this rear end knocked out. Figured I'd bring you guys up to speed. So we got it cleaned out, new seals in it, putting new wheel cylinders, all new brakes. Brad's over there. That's what the third member looks like for you guys that aren't familiar with the nine inch. And we got the, oh, get some light. Center section cleaned up pretty good. I don't know if you see the chocolate syrup that came out of it. So I'm surprised the bearings have last, but we are slowly making progress. So I'm gonna get this thing together here. So everything was going great, um, <laughs> except uh, I ran into a little problem. So we're putting in new wheel cylinders, and you know you always worried about this if you guys have ever done any of this kind of a brake work. The other one came out okay. I actually 
sprayed these down with uh, penetrating fluid the day before and um, even used heat on this one but she still wouldn't come off let me get out of the light here as you can see um, it's just been in there for so long and it's just rusted even using a flare wrench it still wanted to uh, round the ends so um, only option was was to cut her so here's the brake line there and um, just got a piece of straight we'll bend this one up and we'll put a new brake line in but uh, those are the uh, oopses that you run into when you're trying to do a job you know even though it, book time may say one thing you know you never know what you're going to run into and, and it could end up going to uh, twice as long as the job is going to take but uh, otherwise everything is coming together pretty good we'll move you over here and see I, we got the uh, got the third member in all buttoned up got uh, axle shafts in with obviously the new bearings and seals here's the wheel cylinder so I'm gonna uh, get the brakes on and like I said I'll get that brake line all knocked out we'll have to bleed the brakes and then um, still got to finish up with the uh, um, broken bolt I haven't uh, worked on that since uh, the first day it's uh, coming along but uh, it's fighting me the whole way so anyways guys just giving you a, a short update here kind of work and then film and working in film is easier to do that than trying to uh, film the whole thing and shorten it up and of course we got to uh, fill the pumpkin with fresh oil but uh, I don't know if the light's good if you can see the gunk that came out there man that was nasty that's why you got to do preventive maintenance <laughs> so anyways hope you guys have been enjoying this okay when I uh, picked up this brake line they come in even lengths 30 inches 20 inches 40 inches well I needed about 35 36 inches so took the long one cut it off I've been bending it and so uh, now I need to flare one end since I had to cut it off and I'm just going to show some brake flare in here if you guys haven't seen it uh, first thing to do make sure you put your fitting on before you flare so I've done that many times you get in a rush and you get it all flared it's usually a pretty flare too and the next thing you know you realize you didn't put the fitting on and you got to cut it off and start all over again so ah totally discouraging there this is your basic flaring tool kit uh, and you want her to come down even so the flare is even So you've got these dies that do uh, half the flare and then you come back with this tool and you run her back down and you finish her up. Two step process. Easy breezy, not too hard. Of course if you do a lot of brake lines they do make pneumatic kits. make it a lot easier when I was doing custom brake lines on Jeeps and four wheel vehicles my fingers would be all worn out but there she is hopefully the light is good and you guys can see that so she looks good nice and uniform what we're looking for so she'll seal up good on the other mating part so let me get her out, hold on. Sorry for the shakiness, but it's easier to move you around like this. And we put some eyeballs on. Let me take a look at it, see if she's gonna be good or not. She looks pretty good. She should seal pretty well. And I can see I've been bending the line so she'll come out of the wheel cylinder, clear the U-bolts, 
run along the back of the axle and goes up over the, the back of the pumpkin there and then into the uh, teeth fitting. So uh, let me run a little scotch bright on her and uh, get this thing installed. Just finished the brake line. Got the light fairly good so you can see it. I didn't think it came out too bad, I but uh, I haven't bent brake lines in a while. But uh, I able to do fairly good. Cover the uh, contour of the axle. Doesn't really want to stay in that clip right there very well. But uh, it looks about factory. So I am happy with that. So moving right along. Yay. Well, I'll give you an update guys. The uh, brakes are done. We did all new parts. Let me uh, get you in there. Hopefully you can see in case you guys have never worked on uh, drum brakes before. Oh, that's what she looks like. These are your shoes. And this is your wheel cylinder here. And then of course you've got all your retainer springs. And then down below, hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure what the white is like. This is your uh, adjuster. You move your pads out to uh, adjust the brakes so not much to it it's a basic design it's been around for a good while Brad is heading over here so now we got to bleed them and uh, we're one step closer to getting this project done well as you can see mother nature is not cooperating with us today we had planned to uh, work on the Bronco but it is pouring down rain. It's been raining all day and it's going to be raining all day tomorrow. And then it's supposed to be a little bit nice. But then we've got uh, Hurricane Michael coming up the coast. It's actually uh, hitting Florida right now. I think at uh, Category 4, almost a Category 5, which is not good. So I uh, you know, hope you guys uh, are okay down there in the Florida way. Adam Booth and... Um, all your other guys but uh, I did get the 5c collet in the 2964 so we can go ahead and at least get on the way then we can turn the drill bit down since uh, we can't get out there and uh, work on the front of the engine and uh, finish the brakes so anyways uh, let's go over to the Inco get something done today 5c collets in Drill bits in. Let's uh, take this shank down. You take it down a total of 74 thousandths. So divide that by two. We got to go in uh, 37 thou. So. Nothing fancy. I didn't think there'd be any machining on this uh, Bronco repair, but go figure, right? Be 
hot. Eh, a little bit. I'm just gonna use the calipers here. Don't need a don't need the mic for this. 384 if you guys can see that. 384. So that gives me a nine to take off, so about four and a half. We'll just go in five, no big deal on this. Starting to get a tad bit of flex there, aren't we? 377, 3765, 376. All right, that should fit in the drill. Cool. Let me go grab it. Hang on, guys. All righty, we got it, bro. Nice. Well, too bad it's uh, raining. Otherwise, we can go out and finish that hole. So uh, I'll bring you guys back in a couple days when uh, the weather clears and we can get back on the Bronco. So under the Bronco, we uh, got the brakes done. You see we got the uh, junction block brake line in. Brakes are bled and we are uh, good to go on the brakes there we are done the only thing left to do is that uh, um, front uh, broken bolt in the head and uh, let me uh, move the camera around and I'll show you what we're dealing with okay so you're looking at the front of the head let me throw some light in here maybe that'll help um, <laughs> this has been a bear I figured it would be as soon as the left-handed drill bit didn't remove it. And um, this is the end of a grade eight bolt, so it's pretty hard. We got it drilled fairly deep, um, unfortunately, because of the uh, restricted area in here, we don't have much room to work with. And you can't really see what you're doing. You're hoping you're trying to go in straight. so. We kind of got it drilled out, but we didn't go uh, totally in straight. So the uh, issue we're having, let me move this around and kind of get you set up here and you'll see for the uh, heel coil kit, um, here's the tap that comes in the kit and it's not too bad. They kind of did a combination. It's not a true bottom end and it's not a true taper so I guess you kind of call it a plug tap so it'll somewhat start but then you can get it to go you know all the way to the bottom and almost get some thread so the problem I'm having is one this is soft because it's cast iron so it um, wants to crumble trying to get the tap to start right because obviously the hole is not totally square and true so it's going at an angle and um, I kind of knew that going in and I explained to the guy that, you know, we'll do the best we can with what we got because, you know, as soon as the screw didn't want to uh, back out that I knew I'd be fighting this thing. And he says, yeah, that's no problem. Do whatever you can do to try to get it to work. So, um, you know, once I got to that point of it ain't coming out, ideally it would be to get it off and get it on the mill and do it the right way. Um, so the plan of attack is going to be, which I've seen guys do it before, is, let me get the light to stay, we are going to build a plate, ah, hang on, I lost my microphone, it's not going to be one of those days there, there, now you can hear me, hopefully it won't grab it again, so um, plan of attack is going to be, we are going to build like a rectangular plate, it's going to bolt there, bolt there, and I'm going to weld a nut on the front of the plate, and the bolt is going to go through and 
into that nut and then it can bottom out in the uh, hole. A spacer goes here so it's not a problem. We're just going to trim the spacer down the length that we use up from the plate and from the bolt. So that'll be a good fix. Get him up and running. He'll be happy with that. And he said eventually he is going to pull this motor and rebuild it. So when he does that, that'll be the time to do the uh, repair the right way. But uh, that's what happens sometimes. Uh, you know, you got to uh, step back and punt. But uh, the weather is nice. It is a beautiful fall day. It's like uh, 68 degrees out. So a uh, good day to get this Bronco wrapped up. Let me uh, bring you guys up to speed what we got going on here. So here is the bracket I made. So this is going to bolt in into two existing good threaded holes in the uh, side of the head. And this is the nut that is welded on. So the uh, alternator upper bolt will go straight through here and it can even come out a little bit and go into the, uh, the hole that we've been drilling into this into the head there um, this is a spacer that the customer provided this goes behind the alternator to the head itself so what we got to do now is um, since it's got a slot I'd like 360 degree um, contact so I think I'm gonna put a washer in between this and the bolt so now what I've got to do is basically um, get this distance here I'll get it in the light get this distance here and we'll subtract it from here we'll cut this off and uh, we'll be almost done I'll just need to uh, clean and paint this let it dry and then bolt everything up and then uh, we will be done so hopefully uh, that will take place tomorrow because it's uh, getting late tonight so I'll just let this uh, dry overnight once I paint it so uh, nothing too uh, tricky here. Like I said, I'll just mark this and uh, cut this off. This is aluminum. I'll just cut this off with a hacksaw and uh, we'll be good to go. So thanks for following along, guys. Gonna go handheld here, but the bracket is in. The uh, aluminum spacer, I modified it. So we've got a good fit. Got the belt uh, tightened pretty good. So I think we are done. Yay! So I just got to fire it up. Hopefully it's charging. But I don't see why it isn't going to be charging unless it's a bad alternator. So uh, this project is wrapped up. So I want to say, hey guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, a little bit different than the norm. I will admit, not much machining. But uh, hey, you know, sometimes that's uh, the way it is. So um, if you like the old Broncos, then uh, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And uh, until the next project, we'll see you guys later. Take care.